I believe that uh, throughout uh, more than four decades now, Sayyidity has played a major role in empowering women in different uh, eras. Hello and welcome to The May Man Show. We are coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have a very unique guest, a fellow colleague in the world of journalism. She is the chief editor for Sayyidity and Al Jamila. We have Lama Ashithri. Thank you so much for taking the time to be in our studios today. Thank you so much for having me, Hassan. It's a true honor to be here, and it's a great pleasure to be here. You're an avid reader of Arab news. <laughs> <laughs> so, what inspired uh, you know? What inspired you to get into the career of journalism and editing, and and the world of media featuring women's lifestyle issues? Uh, well, throughout my life, I've always uh, worked to um, empower uh, females and. It wasn't planned for me to to enter the world of jo- journalism. It was by pure uh, coincidence, I would say. But even before I started uh, my role uh, or being part of the media world, um, I remember I worked at uh, Prince Sultan University and I was uh, part of a new unit that was for um, student uh, activities. Okay. Uh, that was in 2008. Right. And when I joined, I wanted to focus on the talents and the young uh, women in the college and to highlight uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, talents they have. Okay. So I suggested then to do um, a photography exhibition. Uh, there was a, a student's uh, photography club. Uh, and I wanted to do it with uh, the French embassy. Okay. Of course, back then, this was like out of the box. Because yes, of course. Was, this, yeah, this, this is 2008. So yeah, I know. <laughs> and I recall that I went to the dean, Dr. Rafadi Saleh, uh, yeah. an amazing woman, and I really respect her and learned a lot from her. She was like, oh, my God, this is going to be a long, painful chain of approvals, but it's a great idea. Let's work on it. Okay. And we did actually reach out to the cultural attaché at... Uh, the French embassy, and with uh, the young students, the ladies that were handling the photography club, uh, Ghada Sharif and Alban Barak, we were able to put together a really nice exhibition at the embassy okay. where uh, the wives of the ambassadors were there, diplomats, and it was really exciting for them to see the work of, uh, of uh, the students, okay. what they did, what they wanted from this picture that they're sharing. So for me, it was always part of what I do in different uh, parts of my life. All right. And then what were the photographies uh, that were in display in the exhibition? Well, it was different, actually. So various. So they were like nature. They were expressive, uh, part from uh, Saudi, something cultural, uh, something that's related to family as well, uh, which was really interesting because it gave the guests uh, an insightful view of uh, uh, young talents in Saudi at a time that exchanging culture was not uh, um, was not available in this type of uh, activities or events. All right. And fast forward now, you are the chief editor of uh, Sayyidati and Jamila. <laughs> so how did you envision um, this role and and its contributions to highlighting women's achievements and aspirations for the new generation and generations to come? Uh, I believe that uh, throughout uh, more than four decades now, Sayyidity has played a major role in empowering women in different uh, eras. If I take two cases uh, that we can compare now, which Sayyidity was part of. For example, 15 years ago, Mm -hmm. Sayyidity launched a big campaign for uh, underage marriage. Yes. And it was on a regional level where key opinion leaders were part of this uh, uh, campaign, uh, authors, intellectuals, uh, royal members, uh, ministers. 
and they were able to stop actually five marriages, underage marriages uh, in Saudi, Egypt and Yemen back then. That was 15 years ago. And if we talk about 2024, Sayyidatina is the media partner for Maria Bahrawi, yeah. the leading actress of Noura movie. Right. 17-year-old the talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were with her in Cannes because uh, the movie, of course, is the first Saudi movie to be participated in Cannes. And if you compare just those two cases and you see the role of Sayyidati right. in a different era, it would be the same yeah. because we are empowering. We are uh, targeting the same audience, same region, same people, but different eras. But it's the same role. Okay. Just different platform. Well, an evolving platform. I'm not going to say a different platform. I mean, for now, it's with Vision 2030, obviously. Uh, this is the time where you put your hand together with young talents. Uh, uh, having women rights, I think we crossed a really milestone in that. And now is the time to focus on how to support talents and how uh, to make them grow. Okay. And then uh, with the evolution of CEDT, I mean, first it was, of course, you know, it was a magazine. Now you're one of the biggest and most visited websites, you know, for the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, one of the top five, if I'm not mistaken, and also uh, listed in Forbes as well. So through this journey, can can, can you highlight some memorable moments of uh, how this uh, transition um, basically enriched your your career as a journalist or if there's any moments that you want to shed light on? I think uh, Sayyidati is a real pioneer uh, even in the digital world because we were part of uh, the digital world since 2004. Right. So 20 years now. Yes. And uh, the uh, the achievements that we had of achieving 68 million unique views in 2021, and we were listed at Forbes uh, list, uh, ranked number five for the most uh, powerful websites in the region, in MENA actually, yeah. is is amazing because we worked so hard for this in the past year. We started a new strategy to okay. uh, uh, improve the content, to get a higher reach, to focus on quality as well, okay. and to be on ground, uh, to meet people, to see them. Uh, to reconnect in a way. Why? So when when we got the news, it was it was just perfect because uh, uh, we worked so hard for this and we really celebrated in the best way because back then uh, we had just finished uh, Sayyidati Glass House in uh, Boulevard. Okay. Uh, it was the first uh, season of Riyadh season uh, where there was this beautiful glass house of Sayyidati in the Boulevard. We hosted. Over six weeks, um, uh, talents from different parts of the region okay. uh, discussing everything that is related to um, uh, women, to design, to art, culture. Uh, so both coming at the same time, we just finished this successful uh, glass house and getting this news of uh, Forbes was amazing. All right. And, and, and... Uh... What can you um, basically reveal to us uh, that ca- that we can expect from CDT's digital footprint in the next couple of years? Um, we're more focused now on uh, working on programs. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, for a specific audience um, that interprets the vision and mission of CDT. Yeah, things that are related to community, things that are related to empowering women, supporting youth, but in a format of a YouTube program, yeah. I would say, yeah. All right. Well, interesting. Yeah. So we're going to have, I, I take it the show is going to have some stiff competition in the next couple, <laughs> couple of years. Always uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then, uh, okay, so aside from, you know, being the chief editor of CDT and Jimmy, you're, you're also a co-founder of uh, Bintinet Network. Um, what motivated you to establish this, this uh, Arabic online magazine? And just tell us a little bit about that endeavor. That was um, my first step into digital world that actually uh, the founder uh, was my friend Halal Trayit she's the digital guru 
Okay. And uh, back then I was still in college. And um, in that time, even after, I was thinking that even after I graduate, there were no exciting opportunities um, for jobs. Okay. And it was very limited. So we thought that I like writing and why not? And there was no digital content in Arabic. There was a gap in that. Okay. Uh, and we thought, like, why not start uh, a website? Uh, that part of it is forum, where people, where we have this small community um, of members uh, who discuss uh, things, talk on a daily basis, chit chat. Okay. Uh, and on the other side of it, there is this content that is related to lifestyle. Uh, be it travel, uh, decor, fashion, jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this is how we started. I started really small with no like a clear business plan, I would say. All right. But it kicked off and it was really successful. It was thriving from passion. Exactly. And uh, uh, it adapted to all the changes that happened later on. Uh, we had uh, it, it turned from like a magazine to a blog, and then there was social media. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was evolving in a nice way, but it was a really nice uh, introduction to the digital world. All right, and and then uh, what memorable moments uh, do you have from from this journey? Um, it has to be like a moment that stands out. There is a moment. There is. I I remember that. Um, Someone reached out to us from a digital marketing agency, right? And they were like, "Your your numbers are amazing, and we have this uh, great campaign, sponsored campaign for you." And we were like, "You're, you're paying us to have your ads." This was back in early two thousand, maybe I don't know, so three or two. Don't quite recall, but it was. For us, it was really surprising because we were not expecting anything back from it. We were doing it out of uh, passion. And, and and then we realized that, okay, this is business. This is not only a hobby that we're doing and enjoying. This actually is, is a business that can be profitable. All right. Yeah. And uh, th through this journey, what what strategies, what, what keeps you uh, basically, uh, how do you evolve? With the land, you know, the ever changing media and publishing landscape, it's not uh, it's not easy at all. But I think the most important thing is to adapt to uh, to changes uh, and to keep an eye on all uh, all things that are happening uh, with Google algorithms, with AI, all the opportunities that is related to ads and um, you know creating new uh, revenue uh, streams and. Um, uh, and also keeping an eye and monitoring how um, how uh, people are consuming the content, yeah. in what way they're consuming the content, because this will help us to know where to put the content, how to, in what format we put the content. Uh, so you just need to keep an eye on everything and just catch up, you know. All right, and then and uh, what are your thoughts about you know AI? being utilized in, in media? I think there is great opportunity with AI. Yeah. Uh, it's not finalized yet, especially with ads. We're still exploring mm -hmm. how things can be done. But uh, I think uh, there's a, always an opportunity to do something uh, interesting and exciting with new things that come up and rise up in, say, in the industry. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I personally think that it, you know, AI, when when used right can can help you come up with uh you know lots of data and information and also go you know bring patterns i guess of consumption and from that you can make uh you know some decisions on content and and materials yeah yeah absolutely right yeah. and and moving away from the world of technology let's 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 go back to a very monumental partnership that you know you spearheaded with uh, Sayyidati and the King Abdulaziz Foundation for Research and Archives. Can you tell us a little bit about what makes this, uh, you know, partnership significant to you? And uh, this came from a launching of a book also as well called The Traditional Saudi Culture in the Central Region, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 
This is a really important partnership that we're very, very proud of. It's an interpretation of our vision and mission. Uh, it's a, a documentary, actually, book uh, that Dr. Leila Al-Bassam uh, worked on for uh, her dissertation in her uh, master's degree. And it took her like 35 years uh, to have it published. Uh, but for us to be part of uh, the launch of this uh, book is really important for us because uh, we get to play the role of creating awareness about the importance of uh, our culture in terms of uh, of customs, in terms of uh, how people used to live, how people used to get dressed, and it's all in the identity uh, of our history. Uh, we are promised from Dr. Leila that there will be more to come, uh, and we're really excited to uh, do, of course, to be part of it even future. All right, and then let's 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 get back to your beginnings. Uh, so you you know you you come from a marketing communications background, I believe that's that's your that's my master's. That's yes. your master's. Yeah. So how do you um, apply what you learn and you know in your higher education studies? Where you know how do you basically um, translate that to journalism, media, publishing? I think. Um... It's it's uh, it's a compatible knowledge. So it's what you've learned uh, during your studies, and marrying this to experience and on ground uh, on practical ground, experience. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then you 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 understand how things are going because sometimes the things that you learn in school is not exactly applicable. Okay. To, uh, I guess to, there's the theoretical and practical. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And then you, ha so you have to really try things, and you have to explore, and you have to maneuver, and uh, uh, see what works and what doesn't. Um, uh, so I believe that uh, having the educational background is really important, but also having the experience. Yeah. Uh, is just as important. And, and so, when you were getting your master's, uh, where were you getting your experience? While I was studying, yes. okay. <laughs> so um, I started with Arab News actually yeah. um, as a freelance. Okay. So I worked for covering business uh, exhibitions right. uh, to get uh, yeah, to get to know everything that's happening in the industry and to get you know to get to know people and to get connections and to be able to uh, uh, help me in my dissertation. Okay. Uh, this was for uh, one year during my study. It, it was as a freelance. Uh, it was a freelance job, yeah. and I really enjoyed it, and I learned a lot. Uh, and Arab news is very dear to my heart. Uh, it was actually the gate uh, to SRMG. Yeah. Because uh, after that, uh, I went from Arab news to Hia magazine, mm -hmm. freelancing for some time, and then full timer right. for seven years. Okay. Seven years, and and then see that. All right. So it's like nine years as full timer with Saramji. Okay, and then what's what's next for you? You think? I don't know. Yeah. Only, to be honest, only, I don't. Time, know. only time will tell. Only right. time. Will, I don't know because for me, if you ask me that, if I saw this coming yeah. in my journey, I would say no. All right. I did not see it coming because I like to focus on the moment. Okay. Give my best. Enjoy. Learn. Um, Communicate, all right, uh, and then see how things unfold. All right, and and then speaking of moments, uh, and what moment you know uh, b before you started, of course, you're you know studying mm -hmm. masters or if you, you know while you were doing your university. When did you say I, I wouldn't mind pursuing journalism? You know, in, in general, like who, who inspired who inspired you? Who pushed you to to make this uh, to take this you know shift or this endeavor? Yeah. I think the fact that I like writing, I'm very inspired by people and telling stories. Um, and after Bintnet uh, I kicked off and after Arab News, my experience with Arab News, and then I went from business to lifestyle with here, I realized that uh, this is an industry that I really enjoy. Yeah. And I wanted to explore more and see how I can grow, how I can learn. Uh, and I learned a lot from all the colleagues that I've worked with. Um, it's uh, 
it's just a fantastic. Um, it's always changing yeah. with me. It's ever evolving. As it's well. ever evolving. I mean, you say you enjoy it. I, I obviously I enjoy it as well. But what do you enjoy about it? I mean, with me, I enjoy the storytelling aspect. I like telling stories in general. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I love that. I would say I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I like uh, to meet people. I like to know uh, more about what they're doing with their. Uh, with their stories. I like also, to be honest, and this is something that I understood now, uh, earlier in my career life, uh, I was enjoying more this uh, aspect of, uh, of the industry, which is meeting people and telling stories and creating content more than... Uh, Leading. More than behind the scenes, actually, which yeah. is like CMS and SEO and, you know... Um, uh, all the interesting roles. digital glitches and yes. uh, b- bugs on the website, etc. Yeah. But uh, and also video editing. But I realized that all of this knowledge that was not really the most enjoyable part of of the job really added up to my experience, and it made a huge difference later on in my career. All right. Yeah. Okay. And where do you see? The evolution of media here in the kingdom of Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia, and then well, what? How do you hope, uh, or what role do you hope to be a part of this evolution or transition? I think we're lucky. We're very, very lucky in Saudi Arabia that we're standing on a very solid foundation in media. Uh, two years ago, uh, King Salman, uh, Allah yafaza. Acknowledged uh, Jaridat Umm Al Qura for their uh, 100th anniversary, mm-hmm. which is amazing. Yes. Uh, this newspaper, even uh, during World War II, where uh, most of the uh, newspapers around the world did, was not able to print, there were, Abdul Aziz yes, they were printing gave everything. directions to yes. find a way to keep printing. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, it was uh, due to paper supply. But it went on. It did not stop. And if you look at all the colleagues in different, uh, um, throughout decades, uh, in lifestyle, in news, if you t- would see uh, Turkish Dairy, late Turkish Dairy, uh, Dr. Khaled Malik, uh, Hisham and Muhammad Ali Hafid, publishers yes. who were part of, uh, who actually started Sayyidati in 1981. Yes. Uh, so we're very lucky to be part of uh, this great foundation. And now we're even pushing it more with Saudi Journalist Association. I was uh, honored to be elected as uh, as a member uh, with 12 uh, colleagues and Ayadwan uh, Al-Ahmari as a chairman and Faisal Abbas as a vice chairman. So great things are about to come for sure, inshallah. All right. And then, of course, with this uh, evolution, there needs to be a new talent uh, breed in, of journalists, a new generation. What advice do you have for aspiring journalists or aspiring young Saudi journalists? I would say uh, learn the craft. Yeah. Learn the craft. Just learn everything that you can learn about the industry, everything, back end, front end, uh, everything, because this will help you later on yes. when you have uh, a higher position or a leader po- leadership position. You will know the insides, the outsides. You will know everything. And it will make you um, stronger in taking decisions that are related to, uh, to that. So uh, even if it's slap, Less interesting to 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 do that back end uh, yeah. job, but learn it and um, uh, let's always try to stay stay true to ourselves. All right, I mean that that's actually some very good advice. I couldn't agree more. I started out as a TV show presenter and a news anchor, and only uh, when I started learning how to be producer and all the back you know, behind the camera type of roles that did, did I appreciate the, yeah. the 360 knowledge of, of, of media. Exactly. And uh, are you a fan of the show? 
Of course, I'm a fan of show. Yeah. And and uh, what do you? Uh, what are your thoughts about you know the digital movement uh, behind Arab news? I think Arab news is uh, is taking like big big steps, uh, and I'm really proud of all the things that they're doing. Arab News was established 1974. 1974. Yeah, and it was it was the early 70s. I'm I'm always very bad with the exact date, but it was the early 70s. So looking at this really um, long history and the powerful uh, name of the brand, you you just know that they were doing things right. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I uh, first started here in 2007, my third month. On, on the job, I was doing an investigative piece, which was very high. To me, it's still like a highlight in my career because it was uh, basically uh, confirming and correcting every media outlet here in the country. So yeah. it was a big thing for me back then. And uh, I always ask every one of my guests uh, towards the end, of, the end of the interview if they have a message to the May Man Show and Arab News audience. What's your personal message? Uh, my personal message is that um, it's never a one-man show. Yeah. There are always support that you get from family, from friends, from colleagues, team members. It's always support. And uh, when we put our hands together, we can make miracles. We can move mountains. And I think this is my personal experience uh, um, which I really, I'm, I'm really grateful for uh, for all people in my life who had supported me and still supporting me uh, in my journey. All right. I mean, that's a very heartfelt uh, personal <laughs> message. And uh, I can see uh, someone from my team smiling that it's never a one-man <laughs> show. Of course, it's not a one-man show. And, uh, and I'd like to Thank you so much Thank for, you so for much. coming here and, and having this conversation with us. And uh, hope you tune in to more episodes of The May Man Show. And for our audience, tune in to the one and only May Man Show. See you later. Mm-hmm.